OpenStack community. Bienvenue and welcome. Thank you for traveling to Paris. We are so happy you are here. To kick things off, please welcome Director of Engineering, OpenStack Foundation, Thierry Carré. Bonjour à tous et bienvenue à l'OpenStack Summit. Hello everyone and welcome to the OpenStack Summit. It is a great pleasure to welcome you here in the beautiful city of Paris. Uh, some of you know I grew up in this city not far away from here. So uh, this is our first summit in Europe and I'm very glad we are having it here in, in Paris. I wanted to do a quick survey of the audience to get an idea. Um, could you please raise your hand if this is your first OpenStack Summit? Wow. Okay, and please raise your hand if, this, if you're coming from France. Well, not too bad. Okay, so when, when people ask me why we go through the constant madness of organizing those events every six months, my answer is this. Uh, this is our mission, to constantly reach out to new people and make sure, give the opportunity to people to join our community wherever they are. And, um, here in Paris, we have uh, about 49% of attendees that are coming from Europe, compared to only 9% in the previous summit in Atlanta. So it's really important for us to, um, to reach out to those, to those uh, areas of the world. Um, we also have 57% less Americans, which may or may not be a good thing. <laughs> So I would like to thank again our headline sponsors, Red Hat, Intel, Ericsson, Huawei, and all our other 90 sponsors for making this event possible. Uh, if, this, if this is your first OpenStack Summit, uh, it's actually multiple events into one. You have the, the main conference and expo hall here in the Palais des Congrès going from Monday to Wednesday. Uh, you have the design summit where OpenStack contributors gather to uh, discuss and brainstorm the, the content of the OpenStack Kilo development cycle. And this happens across the street in uh, the lower level of the Meridian Hotel, uh, starting from Tuesday and ending on Friday. We also have an operator summit where uh, OpenStack deployers come to share their experience and structure the feedback that they give to, uh, back to development. And this happens today and with uh, extra sessions on Thursday. A small housekeeping item, because I promised I would say it. <laughs> so for full access pass holders, lunch will be served here at the level two of the Palais des Congrès today. But starting tomorrow, there will be two separate lunch areas, one uh, uh, for Design Summit attendees at the Meridian. So if you're attending the Design Summit, have lunch directly at the Meridian, while everyone else will have lunch uh, here. You will find plenty of very useful information like this on your badges, so please unpack your badges and read. You'll see all, uh, all that information in there. Um, this is a pretty intense week, so I won't waste any more of your precious time. Um, please help me welcome on stage our first keynote speaker, a fine connoisseur of Burgundy wine, the executive director for the OpenStack Foundation, Mr. Jonathan Bryce. Good morning, bonjour, welcome to Paris. I am uh, so excited to be here with you. And we have a, uh, a really exciting morning of content that we have in store. So I'm glad that uh, you are all here to join us and, uh, and kick off the summit this week. It's gonna be a great week. Thierry ran through quite a bit of, uh, of, of housekeeping information in a short time. I hope that uh, you're able to really take advantage of all the things that happened this week. Uh, there are great speaking sessions, a lot of great content, um, great opportunities to network, great opportunities to learn about OpenStack, to help set the future of OpenStack. And uh, in case this is your first OpenStack Summit, we usually have a lot of great evening events. And it seems like, uh, like our, our evening event sponsors have really tried to outdo themselves here in Paris this year. So uh, I saw that uh, Terry asked how many of you were here for the first time? And it looked like quite a few of you. 
I wanted to know how many of you were here in Atlanta at the last summit? Okay, so a good number, but uh, you know, this is, it's great to see us reaching new audiences. It's also great to see the people who come back again and again and, and keep us moving forward. Um, we, we've sold more tickets for this summit than any of our previous summits. So people do like Paris. You know. <laughs> That's probably not a shocker. Um, and, uh, and Terry talked about, you know, these are global events. This is our first one that we've brought to Europe, but we have 59 countries represented here this week. So people from all over the world, all sorts of different organizations are here. I want to talk about, uh, to get things started, a few things that, that we covered in Atlanta and, uh, and then build on that a little bit. In Atlanta, I talked about how we are in a very interesting time in the world where everyone competes with a startup. You know, this is a new competitive environment where everyone is facing disruption from smaller, more agile c competitors. And it doesn't really matter what the industry is. It can be the finance industry. They have new payment options, uh, Stripe, PayPal, Square, Bitcoin. It could be big media. You know, they have to fight for attention from their users with social media gaming, with uh, companies like Netflix, started out as a, as a company that, uh, that, that delivers DVDs and, and streaming videos, and has now gotten into content, including winning awards doing that. The automotive industry. You know, this is a, a, an industry that, that you would think of as being hard to disrupt. It takes a lot of capital, a lot of investment, to go out and break into the automotive industry. But companies like Tesla, are, uh, are really shaking things up. And in the tech industry, there's always disruption. And if you uh, have paid attention to the themes and the trends over the last couple of years, one of the things that you've probably heard about a lot is software-defined everything. You know, we have software-defined storage, software-defined networking, the data center. I think really this is bigger than just technology, though. We are living in a software-defined economy. And I talked about this in Atlanta, and, uh, you know, I got a little bit of grief. People said, just what we needed, another buzzword. And, you know, it's, it's true. There are a lot of buzzwords out there, uh, social, mobile, cloud, you know, software-defined everything. And, and you, uh, you look at all of that, and, and it's enough to, to make you just kind of shake your head and go, what does it all mean? You know, what, is, what does all of this mean? But I think that, that it actually comes down to some pretty simple concepts. When I talk about the software-defined economy, I'm talking about an environment that we live in where change is easier than ever before, where people can move faster than ever before. And if I can sum it up in one word, I think that it comes down to choice. People have choice like never before, whether it is your customers, your internal users, whether it's you as a, an IT department trying to decide what you're going to do in your own environment, there is a choice all around you. And this is, this is kind of a, an interesting um, shift that we've seen happen over the last few years. You know, there was a, an old model that, uh, that I call passive consumption, where, you know, we, uh, we bought what our vendors sold us, we uh, upgraded when they told us to upgrade, multi-year product cycles, sure, you know, we're, we're cool with that. And, uh, and as a user, we used the computer that our IT department gave us, we used the phone that our IT department gave us, we used the software that our IT department gave us. And that, I think, is a model that is really going away in, in almost every organization. You know, the, the model that we're in now is really about getting what you want. <laughs> and it's because we are all so used to having choice. We want to use our phone, we want to use our tablet, we want to bring our own devices. We want to work the way that we want to work. When I go into data centers and I talk to people who operate data centers, they're mixing and matching every technology inside of that data center, which introduces complexity, but also gives them an advantage because they can meet the needs of their business better through this choice. And uh, on the software development side, we've gone from these extremely long cycles to releasing early and often. You know, what's a release even? I deploy to production. And so this is a, a new model that we see in technology and also in, uh, in, in the consumers of technology, whether they're our customers or whether they're our internal users. No one is passively taking what they are offered anymore. 
You know, the Central Planning Committee is dead. And what's really interesting to think about here is how this has happened. You know, in a lot of cases, this is driven from many areas of the business. The business doesn't accept force-fed technology. People talk about cloud and virtualization. What's the difference? Well, I think there are obviously technology differences, but to me, one of the biggest differences is how they actually came into use. For the most part, virtualization is a technology that was brought in by IT departments. It was a planned implementation of a large-scale virtualization environment. And virtualization was driven by IT. Cloud, however, has been this kind of insurgent technology. Cloud has been, business, has been driven by people all around the edges of the business. And, uh, and everyone in a business now is able to make technology decisions. It's not about the central planning committee anymore. It's who has a credit card. And they can go out and procure the technology that they want. All of these technology decisions are moving out to the edges of the business. Even things like software development. This is one of the, one of the trends that's been really interesting to watch, how inside of organizations, software development is happening in pockets all over these organizations, in the marketing department, in the internal departments, in all of these business units. And in many ways, you know, as this starts to happen, every, software, or every company becomes a software company. And so the most successful organizations are the ones who are building frameworks. They're creating platforms so that their business users can create the environment they want. There's an interesting analogy here. Uh, I noticed a, an article in the Wall Street Journal a couple months back and uh, pointed out that the world's largest toy company recently became Lego. They surpassed Mattel. And what is Lego? Legos are a framework for creating the environment you want. It's very simple building blocks that you can turn into anything you want. We actually have a, a Lego station, I think, uh, on one of the floors, and I'm, I'm gonna be looking forward to seeing what people put together up there. You know, these simple fundamental building blocks can become anything. And, and that is what we've seen with cloud and why cloud adoption has just skyrocketed. Because organizations now have the ability with these frameworks to build the environment that they need to put these pieces together and make whatever they want. And so, you know, this cloud revolution has presented challenges for sure to, uh, to a number of companies, but it also presents the biggest opportunity in a generation for those of us in IT. This is our biggest opportunity to have a massive impact directly on our businesses. So this is a great time to be here, a great time to be involved in all of this. You know, one of the things that's also been interesting is to hear how people think about the technologies that run. You know, people say um, OpenStack gets used for dev, test, and web a lot, and that's true. Um, you know, they, they will say it's used for these, not production workloads. But it actually is used for production workloads. Companies like Intel and SAP are, are actually speaking here this week about how they are doing enterprise deployments and enterprise applications on, on top of OpenStack. But I actually think that, that we're missing the point here. In, in this new world that we live in, in this software-defined economy, what is production all about? What does it mean? Well, at its root, you know, production is about producing. It's about producing value for your business, producing value for your users and for your customers. And for those of us in technology, the, just running standard off-the-shelf software, that is no longer enough to provide the value that our businesses need. You know, unless you are in the email business, it doesn't matter if you run Exchange better than other people. You know, that's not the core value to your business that you can provide. And so we have to think about, from a technology perspective, how do we drive value to the business? And in many cases, it comes down to driving innovation. We have to make technology frameworks that allow our businesses to move faster and to seize this massive opportunity. So again, I think you know, for all of us here, this is the biggest opportunity of our career. And, uh, and that is very exciting to be at a moment like that. One of the things that's also been interesting that I would say over the last decade is to see how innovation has changed from something that happens in large corporations and a proprietary model or in big institutions to something that's distributed among collaborative teams, just like what's gonna happen here this week. You know, OpenStack is a, is a great example of technology that's built by thousands of developers from hundreds of countries, hundreds of companies, and 
We do it all in the open. And that's, a, that's been a trend that's been happening for a while. So um, I'm really excited to have our next speaker here. He is a, he's someone who has been driving collaborative development and open source movements for years. And he is also someone who provided a lot of support for OpenStack and for the OpenStack Foundation as we were getting started. So please help me welcome to the stage the executive director of the Linux Foundation, Jim Zimlin.